All right, welcome back, guys. Um, I've put about, oh, 20, 25 hours on this new prop now, and so I really wanted to do a review for you guys. And I know there's at least a couple of you out there um, that might be ordering one of these and want to know a little bit more about it and how it works. So before we get into too many details, I haven't had a chance to go do a speed test yet with it. So we're going to go try to do that this morning. Um, I'm not sure how well it's going to go, if it's going to be too bumpy or not. Uh, we'll see what happens. So, uh, yeah, we'll go do a speed test with it, see where we're at, and then uh, we'll uh, go over everything else. Carson Traffic, RV2, Romeo Victor, departing runway 27B, uh, downwind departure to the east, Carson. So here's what we're going to do. I do not have an outside air temperature gauge in this airplane, which means I can't get 100% accurate reading of what the temperature is at altitude and, and where uh, the density altitude is at and compared to indicated altitude. Uh, so I'm doing my best guess. I know that on the ground, the density altitude is about 6,600, uh, and we want to do this test at an 8,000 foot density altitude. So I'm going to use about 6,100 feet indicated for this test. We're going to do a three leg GPS test, and then uh, that's the most accurate way to kind of remove any errors. So, how this works is we'll choose a heading to start with, and uh, I'm kind of in a southerly direction right now on a heading of about 150. So, we're going to start with that, uh, descend down to 6100, start on a 150 heading, and then once we get established, we're going to go wide open throttle in level flight at 6100 feet. And uh, once I uh, feel that we're stabilized, we will uh, record the manifold pressure, the wide open throttle RPM, and our GPS ground speed. So after that, then we'll turn uh, west, 90 degrees to the west, uh, be a right turn, and we'll do uh, our second leg. And that one we only need to note our GPS ground speed because we know our starting heading and manifold pressure and all that should be the same. And then we'll do that again. We'll turn back to the north, 90 degrees, and record that. And then uh, plug that into our calculator. And we should see what our true airspeed is. And we're at uh, 2650 on the RPM, 2660, something like that. 140 knots. Now we'll turn to a heading of 240. All right, so there's 240. Uh, right back at 6100. We'll mark that down as 153. So, all right, there's uh, just a hair over 330. Seems to be uh, hanging out right at 162 knots. All right, so we're going to go ahead and climb up here. And while I do that, I'll mark that as 162. We can go ahead and do our uh, plug these into our calculator. Yeah, so uh, we were about 151 knot true airspeed. So we didn't change very much, uh, roughly the same. But what I can tell you that this prop is uh, two inches longer and it is more efficient. So I can get uh, the same uh, feet per minute on climb out with this prop at a lower RPM than I was able to with the old one. And it's important to remember that no matter whether you have a cruise prop or a climb prop, they're all capable of the same top speed. It's just at a different RPM. All right, so kind of done what I wanted to do there. Go back to Carson, maybe do a landing or two and call it a day. Okay, so now that we've done that speed test and uh, established where we're at with uh, top speed, true airspeed with this, which is 150, 151 knots, about the same as the old prop. Uh, now we can get into the finer details um, of my review, what I think of it, how you change the pitch and how easy it is. I've already pulled the cowl off and the spinner off here, and then there's also a uh, front spinner bulkhead, which just has two uh, little bolts that hold it on there, but you got to take those off to get to all these if you want to change the pitch. The first thing I want to say about Sensenic and this prop is they had great customer service. Uh, Don Roll 
uh, at Sensenik, who's the uh, president, personally gave me a call when I inquired about this prop, um, and we chatted about it, and pretty much sold me on it. So I have nothing but great things to say about him and those guys there at Sensenik. I definitely want to say I love it so far. It's great. Uh, this is the 70-inch diameter prop. I had a 68-inch on before, uh, so I went two inches longer. Uh, I have plenty of ground clearance for that. A longer prop is usually more efficient, especially in climb, which is what we seem to have noticed. This one has the stainless steel leading edge for uh, leading edge protection. Uh, you know, this can be rain or debris, you know, if you're operating off of unimproved strips, things like that. And then the rest of the prop is uh, composite, a mix of carbon fiber and some other materials. I don't know what all the materials are, but a main product is carbon fiber, and it's actually a hollow prop. It's not solid, and that's their proprietary design. As you know, most props, including my old one, are one solid piece, and they bolt right in the middle. This one, on the other hand, is two separate blades, which is how they are allowed to be ground adjustable. You can see the ends of these little pins that are uh, attached to the ends of the blade. So the blades sit in here. This is about as far as the blade goes. And then there's a pin on each one. And that's how you set the pitch. So we have six of these pins, which they're actually, um, each side is a different setting. A zero is a climb pitch and a five is a cruise pitch. They say to start with four uh, to see where you're at to begin with. I actually started at five just because I wanted to see what the extreme was. Changing the pitch on this thing is really easy. In my case, it probably takes five to 10 minutes longer than it would for someone else who had the setup that Sensenik um, designed this around. So as you can see here, I have all of these bolts sticking through the back and I have this prop spacer that comes off the flywheel here. So the way this was designed is that this spacer is actually a little bit shorter um, and there is another spacer that's about an inch and a half or two inches thick that goes on this side of this spacer and that's threaded so that these four bolts here thread right into that spacer and you do not have to take the top of the cowl off to change the pitch. In my case, because of the way the spacer was and I didn't want to have to get a new spacer and then get a threaded spacer and worry about all that, I just decided it's easier to work with what I got. Uh, everything already matches up and we'll just take the top of the cowl off when we need to change it. Now that we've got the cowl off and we want to change the pitch, we would loosen all eight of these bolts. And these four on the outside are just threaded right into the back of the hub. So those are easy. It's these four that are all the way through. So we would loosen all of those up, but just enough so that you can rotate the blade. Uh, you don't want to do it any more than that. And then you rotate the blade. Uh, in this case, this one would come up like this, and this one would come down like this. Then your pins would be above the hole here and below the hole here, and you're ready for the next step. Because I've already got these torqued where I want them and I've already retorqued them, I'm not going to loosen them and show you that whole process, but I can show you how it works. I'm currently using the number one pitch pin setting. So how you do this is you do each blade individually, so you loosen it just enough to rotate the blades, and you put this guy in here until it's all the way back in there. So this shank, which is the same on the other side but a different thickness, uh, is what that pin on the blade rotates up against. So you take this now and you would rotate it back towards the airplane until it contacts this pin on the inside. Once it does that, you just lightly snug all four of these bolts, pull this guy out, and then repeat the same thing on this side, only in this case you'd rotate the blade towards the front of the aircraft. Pull that out, and you're ready to torque the bolts down. And once you've got that done, you go do a ground run for about five minutes at uh, Sensenix says half the desired full throttle RPM. After that, you come back, check the torque of all those, and once you're done with that, you put it all back together and you're good to go. So whole process, if I'm by myself, it might take me five or 10 minutes longer, but if I have help, I say 30 minutes start to finish um, including taking the cowl on and off is what it takes me to change the pitch on this, which I think is really fast. I know there's a couple of other manufacturers that have ground adjustable props, 
but it's not this simple. You have to get out with a protractor and measure, and I've heard it takes at least an hour. Um, so their system is awesome. It's really easy. And I hope those of you that are getting ready to install this prop, it kind of shows you the process and how it works. As you may have seen in the install video we did, we had to get these different bolts because of our setup, and they also sent us the wrong size, which that wasn't a big deal. If we did have a threaded spacer, we could have just called them or gone and found the right grade eight bolts, and we'd have been in business, no problem. So that being said, if we had all the right stuff for our setup to begin with before we started the project, I'm guessing start to finish it would have taken us about three hours or so to uh, change the prop out completely. So that's very quick as well. I know that this whole assembly, I had a wood prop with a composite overlay before because of the weight of the, of the hub. It added about four pounds on the nose, uh, which is actually a good thing because the center of gravity is easy to get back on this airplane, so more weight on the nose is better. And then of course down to some of the other performance details we already talked about true airspeed. Um, we talked a little bit about climb when we were flying, uh, but I also wanted to mention, uh, as I did when we were flying, that the climb performance of this prop meets or exceeds my old prop at a lower RPM, which means it's more efficient. Whew, that's hot. So with this prop climbing out a lower RPM of about 2200 to 2250, um, I, at max gross weight, I can still get five to 800 feet per minute on pretty much any given day unless the density altitude is maybe 7,500 or 8,000 feet and above, which is still really great uh, for 150 horsepower 0320. That's one thing I'll say, this prop has been great so far because the 150 horsepower 0320 is a bit underpowered at this high of an altitude. So anything you can do to better the climb performance and efficiency is great. If I wanted to get a slightly better climb rate, I could go uh, with the number zero pitch setting, and it probably increased my RPM, maybe 40 or 50 RPMs. So I hope that helps you guys out understand how we put this together, the performance of it, um, and the experience I had with Sentinic. If you have any other questions about it, feel free to comment down below. Please like the video if you did, subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you next time.